Hi, my name is Jonathan Rocks. I'm field agronomist for Pioneer, and today I'm here with Peter Horvay. Uh, Peter, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to our audience. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Peter Horvay, and I'm um, plant pathologist with Corteva. Um, I'm based uh, in New Holland Research Station in Pennsylvania. So, Peter, you say you're a plant pathologist. If you don't mind just uh, humoring us for a moment, what is a plant pathologist? What does a plant pathologist do? Yeah, that's, that's a good question, actually. I sometimes forget to, you know, explain or um, not many people are familiar. There are not that many plant pathologists, but uh, plant pathologist, in other terms, would be a plant doctor. Uh, and, uh, basically, um, we are looking for a diseases. Uh, my job is really looking, um, looking on the sick corn, in, in my case, uh, since I work with corn. So plant pathologists can work with different diseases, different crops. Uh, so I'm corn plant pathologist, so looking at the sick corn, okay. diseased corn. So you're obviously doing a lot with the diseases then. Why does a disease even matter to corn? What What is it that we're trying to do by figuring out whether that disease is present or absent? Um, yeah, so diseases are um, one of the major uh, factors that lower the yield um, for the growers or for the customers. Um, so certainly, you know, a company like Corteva pays big attention. Um, so um, that's, you know, that's why I was hired, I would say. That's why, that's my job really, um, looking for resistant material or, or susceptible material to make sure that we understand uh, our material. So we're out here in the field and, and Peter, I'll be honest, from an agronomy standpoint, boy, this, this looks like pretty young corn to be worrying about disease. I always think about late season being diseased. So, so what are you looking at here and can you even find a disease in this young of corn? Yeah, so um, I guess first thing is um, we are standing in an inbred field. So, you know, the corn is uh, naturally uh, looking shorter uh, because of inbreds. And yeah, it's a good observation. Um, well, actually, because we inoculate this, um, we inoculate these plots. And um, depending on disease, but um, in the most diseases that we, you know, inoculate in a company, uh, we like to put this uh, inoculum there early. Okay. Um, we want to give it a good head start. Um, you know, we inoculate several times, uh, not just once. Um, then, as you know, we mentioned earlier, we irrigate. You know, we have the ability to irrigate. So um, we really try to create that environment from the early on, um, the environment that pathogen favors. Um, so in order that it starts we say the word cycling, it starts multiplying and uh, you know it makes lesions and those lesions make spores and those spores spread to the neighboring leaves and that, that cycle that continues. So we like to put it early. It's, it's also practically easier to inoculate it early, you know, when the corn is, um, you know, smaller and younger. So Great. So, so you've gone through here, you've inoculated, so you've got some disease pressure. So kind of thinking about that disease triangle, you know, we know that we've got the pressure, the climate's gonna do what it is, you can put some water on it, but then there's always that genetics piece. So I'm assuming that you kind of know the genetics you're looking at. Do you have some standards or controls out here to say, you know, this is really behaving like a bad Northern year or a good Northern year? How do you keep control of that? Um, yes, certainly. I mean, in um, every field um, we know you know, each plot, we know, um, you know, what is there, what is planted, and we always include uh, checks. So checks are um, either inbreds or hybrids, you know, depending on which, like in this case, inbred field, so they will have inbred checks. So those would be the inbreds um, that we have a lot of years of data um, that we know exactly very well with hundreds of replications, like, um, you know, hundreds of data points, call it, um, uh, that we know that, that score, um, so we know that material, how, how it looks, how it behaves. So yeah, to your point, like if, if the season is, let's say, a little bit drier or, you know, a little bit more conducive, there might be some years that it's really heavy, um, we observe those checks and uh, once we see that those checks are reaching, uh, you know, that, that stage uh, or, or, you know, that, uh, that level of susceptibility or resistance, 
um, you know, then we can start scoring the, all the material in the field. Okay. All right. So, so as we look through this plot, um, we're definitely seeing some northern pressure that comes from this inoculation in this specific plot. Um, I guess one of the questions I would have is, well, we know specifically for northern, there's lots of different races. Um, how do we make sure that what we're infecting with here is actually meaningful to a producer, say, you know, across the state or across the nation or whatever else that might have a, a race going on? How do you know that that race is what you're, what you're dealing with? Um, yes, you are, you are right, Jonathan. Um, Northern corn leaf blight um, makes, um, or it's known, you know, to have races. Um, and um, the way how, you know, we make sure that, you know, we are kind of stay, staying up, you know, up to date uh, in terms of the races. Um, every, every year we collect leaves uh, from some naturally occurring, uh, naturally occurring northern cone leaf blight. Uh, so it can be, you know, some, some, some impact uh, field or, you know, some PKP uh, trial that, you know, that we get information uh, that there is uh, the disease and, you know, we collect those leaves. Uh, we send them actually um, to Johnston, Iowa, where is our uh, inoculum production lab, and they race phenotype it for us. So they tell us uh, exactly which race we had in that particular year. Okay. And we made, uh, they make inoculum uh, for us from, that, uh, from those races. So every year, you know, we are getting a picture uh, of what is out there. And the next year we will inoculate with that inoculum. And that is not happening just here at New Holland. But that's happening in any other station across the uh, United States um, that they do similar screening. Awesome. So let's get practical here for a second. So we're standing in an inbred field, and you're going to take a bunch of time to score this and figure out what is susceptible, what's resistant, what's highly resistant. How's a breeder using those scorings in order to make decisions going forward? Um, yes. So, the, yeah, the inbreds are, of course, of particular uh, interest or attention for the breeders um, so you know every breeder um, wants to know you know the material that they are working with um, you know like how susceptible or how resistant it is um, to particular disease so uh, exactly like you say we you know we score this material for them um, sometimes they score it by themselves um, and you know then it depends on the breeder, I guess, that, you know, what's their level of, um, you know, like how sensitive they are, you know, in their program um, to that particular disease. And then they choose to work with those particular parents in, you know, further stages to make crosses, you know, if they want to improve, let's say, disease resistance. Okay, great. So then the other side of this is you're looking at hybrid fields as well in the research, um, some of your crosses. and. And so especially for the folks that we're going to be talking to basically today, they're probably more, even more interested in, you know, they open that Pioneer catalog and they see a trait score, that characteristic book and see a trait score. Is that coming from you? Is that a controlled environment? Is that just let's see what happens? How, how do those get produced from, from your program? Here? Um, yeah, so yeah, all those scores that are there on the catalogs are really carefully, you know, like, um, established I would say and I can assure you that a lot of people you know like um, look at them in terms of before we publish any any score um, and like you say um, you know it's, it's from the hybrid scoring so as you know as we have this field for inbred we have several actually even more fields for hybrids uh, because we know that's farther there down the pipeline closer to the customer so definitely we want to know that material um, so it's everything is coming from the inoculated trials where we have a control um, where we have every year uh, we want to ensure that we have disease there so that we don't have some skips in some years that we go blindly um, you know those trials are scored uh, again like from inoculated trials um, and then you know they are reviewed by you know other researchers and you know people in the company um, before you know they are published great all right well that's been a great overview in how how we uh, inoculate and then score for diseases and we've talked a lot about northern here so far but i'm guessing that your life isn't just that easy that you focus just on a single complex 
Um, I guess I'm a little curious what all you guys actually screen for here, different disease-wise, as well as, you know, across maybe even the nation, what all are we looking at in this similar kind of screening? Yes, exactly. Like how you say, uh, it's, it's not just this northern cone leaf blight. Um, here at the station, um, we screen for several other diseases. Um, so as we have here, northern cone leaf blight uh, field, we have gray leaf spot, uh, so another leaf disease of corn. So, you know, we screen for northern cone leaf blight, gray leaf spot. Uh, then we do also gibberella stalk rot uh, uh, screening. So, you know, there we are looking at the stalks, uh, stalk issues. Uh, we do also diplodia ear mold. Um, and uh, there are also some, you know, smaller scale uh, screenings also for anthracnose mm -hmm. talc rod. Um, in terms of, so that's what here is happening in New Holland, but yeah, uh, across the, you know, United States, uh, some other stations, they concentrate, for example, you know, Gossesville. Gossesville mm -hmm. is a big issue in the West, so that's where we have our screenings there, you know, in the central US and West part. Um, you know, then um, in South, you know, uh, we have a research station that screens for sudden leaf blight. Um, so that's an issue there down South. Um, in the North, uh, around the Great Lakes, you know, they look into the ear molds, uh, uh, gibberella ear mold. Um, so they are dedicated stations for gibberella ear mold. In the West, it's fusarium ear mold. So yeah, it's like you say, it's not so simple. And, uh, but you know, we have, um, in each part of the US, you know, we are targeting those pathogens that are of main importance there. Excellent. Well, hey, Peter, I thank you so much for your time today. It's been really informative and uh, hopefully it gives everybody a little better perspective on all the, the, the massive amount of information that is behind every single one of these hybrids that comes out and eventually goes into a Pioneer bag. So appreciate what you guys do. Appreciate you taking the time for us here. Thank you very much. Oh, you are welcome. It was a pleasure to talk to you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.